Welcome to Rouse Rising. I have a lot going on in this video today. We've got meal preps, unboxings, all kinds of good stuff. I can't wait to share it with you. Let's get into it. The meal preps Aaron did. He made some ground beef, some rice. This is the stuff we made the other day, some more sausage, and then these are livers. All right, sharing with you this morning's brunch. It's like 10 30, 11, I'm not sure what time it is, but Aaron and I are finally eating. This is typically the time of day. It's usually like later morning or early afternoon when we have our first meal. So it's just eggs and this is deer venison sausage with half an avocado on top and Redmond's real salt. We just keep it simple. It's Italian seasoned deer meat. I don't see any seasoning in it, but it's tasty. They must powder it or something. It's good stuff. You have probably seen both this little pumpkin and this butternut squash sitting in my produce basket for months on end. I bought them back in the fall and I think it's about time I deal with these. So I'm going to line this baking sheet with this parchment paper. That just makes my cleanup that much easier. I love using parchment paper. Uh, then we're going to scrape all the seeds out of these, and you can either wash the seeds and roast them, do whatever you like with those. Um, I'm just going to compost them, so I'm scraping them in here. I'm composting them because we still have pumpkin seeds from our pumpkin that we roasted. The kids do like to eat them, um, and I need to get those back out so they finish them up. We dehydrated the pumpkin seeds with some nutritional yeast and some salt, and we have a big jar of them. Okay, so once these are all scraped out and cleaned out we have our oven preheating at 350 degrees fahrenheit and we are going to put some olive oil on these so that they can get a little bit of flavor and a little bit of fat because we always want to be sure that we're using fat in our cooking salt in our cooking uh, those are two very important ingredients they add so much flavor to the most basic meals. So we cover those in a little drizzle of olive oil and I love the Mo, uh, the Momo olive oil dispenser that I have. Stay tuned because I have a giveaway coming up. I'm going to be doing all my giveaways on my lives and next week we have a seed giveaway and then after that I'll be doing another giveaway which will include some olive oil dispensing bottles and some syrup dispenser bottles. Um, this is something here that I'm going to be trying new. I normally don't do this but I wanted to roast some onions with this. Typically when I make butternut squash soup or any kind of savory meal with um, butternut squash. I uh, roast onions as well. It adds a lot of flavor, but I decided to stuff these onions inside of the squashes, and then I am roasting them for about 45 minutes in the oven. I also decided that I would throw some baked potatoes in the oven as well, so we're just gonna put some salt on these. I've poked holes in them, and then we're just gonna wrap them up and throw them in the oven and kill two birds with one stone. Uh, this works out really well because these potatoes potatoes. Um, I ended up being really sick, so Aaron was able to use these and prepare these for the kids. I don't have any footage of what he did with them, but basically you just, you can pre-bake your potatoes and then cut them up and fry them in a pan. And it's just a real quick way to make your fried potatoes because it takes out like the whole cooking process. While that was in the oven, I decided to take a moment and wipe this shelf off that I have in my window. Bodie's sitting there on the counter. He just got up from a nap, so he's a little bit temperamental at the moment, and he just wants to be near and close to mama. So there he is. He's sitting there having a deer stick. It is just like a beef jerky stick uh, or beef sausage, not beef, uh, it's a deer sausage stick is what it is. And so he's just sitting there and we're having a little conversation. He and I, I'm talking with him and he's talking with me and his vocabulary has just exploded in the last couple of months. He repeats everything we say and he speaks very clearly. I'm super impressed with his talking because I have two other boys that 
it took them a long time to speak this clearly and to have such a large vocabulary. Um, but Bodhi has definitely, he he's really talking a lot and very well. So it is about time for my squashes to be nicely cooked. And you can see they have browned a little bit on top, but these were in here for about 45 minutes. And that really cooked them all the way through. This is butternut squash, and this is some kind of pumpkin squash thing. So we're going to peel it and then put it in the blender. I noticed when I touched the yellow or the orange pumpkin that the skin, it just it immediately dyed my fingers with a pasty color of bright orange. So I put on the gloves because it, when I tried to wash my hands, it was like tar or sap or something. It was bizarre how sticky it was and very, very orange. So I went ahead and put on my gloves. That also helps with the heat. Um, my fingers get another second or two before the heat hits my skin with these gloves on. So we're just peeling off the skin. Super easy. What a breeze. I mean, my kids would say, oh, that's so satisfying, and they would be right. So I'm going to put almost all of this into my blender. Some of it I'm going to save, and I'm going to throw on the side of uh, dinner tonight. And the rest will be pureed for future meals. And I'm going to share those meals with you in this vlog. So keep watching because we've got two dishes, two dinner inspirations for you all. And my family absolutely loved both, so I'm excited to share those with you today. You can use an immersion blender in a bowl. You can use a food processor or a blender for this task. I'm using my Vitamix, which is just a high-powered blender. And I started out a l at a lower speed to get it going. And I did not add any liquid to this. The liquid that you see in there is just the syrup from the squashes or the juice from the squashes. So that was enough to get everything in there moving around and pureeing up. And then the next thing we're gonna do, which I did not film, I apologize for that, is we're gonna be putting all of the pumpkin into glass jars and then storing it in the refrigerator. And I keep calling it pumpkin, but it's it's pumpkin and butternut squash, or maybe they're both squashes. I don't know, maybe you know what type of little squash that was, the orange one that we roasted up tonight. But those are gonna stay good in the refrigerator for up to two weeks. And you can use these in pumpkin breads and your pumpkin pies or your butternut squash soup. I keep saying pumpkin. It's all the same though, right? And then this is what we had it with. Um, we had some rice and kielbasa with some squash on the side. The first thing that we are gonna make with this butternut squash puree is some macaroni and cheese with butternut squash as the coloring because when you buy box macaroni and cheese from the grocery store it's neon yellow so we're gonna make that with this butternut squash and I'm gonna be pleasantly surprised because my kids are actually gonna gobble this whole meal up how do I know that because I've already cooked it and I know the results uh, so we're gonna start out with a big old pat of butter you guys know me I don't measure around here but I would guess that's about a quarter cup of the good fat good yellow golden butter. We're also going to go in there with some of this cheddar cheese I got from Azure and this butternut squash puree. But first thing we're gonna do is melt the butter and then we're gonna glop this in there, just put a shake in there. That's about a cup full of this. And then we're gonna save the rest for another recipe. Um, this is gonna be used with some pasta that I've had in my long-term food stores. I don't have any other pasta to use. Well, I do. I have the egg noodle pasta, but I wanted to make actual macaroni and cheese. So what I have here is the one cup of butternut squash puree, a quarter cup of butter, and then we have about a full cup of cheese. And I added about half of a cup of milk or cream or whatever you have. And then I failed to show you guys, but I boiled the macaroni and cheese with some peas and then added it to that pasta sauce. I mixed it all up and then I poured it in this casserole pan. I threw some cheese on top and baked it at 350 for about 20, 25 minutes and completely failed to show you guys all that. But let me show you what's left over from what the kids ate. They got gobbled it up. They ate the whole casserole dish of macaroni, cheese, and peas. It was really impressive. They loved it. 
And then the next morning, here we are. We are going to do some deep cleaning. This mama has been sick and I haven't been able to tackle some of the tasks that are important to me. And that is vacuuming under furniture because we know the kids have all their toys and all their snacks and things. When mama's not around, they have those on the sofa. So we've got some crumbs and some toys hanging out here and we're gonna take care of everything and get this new sofa that we got back before Christmas we're gonna get it all cleaned up and back to new so let's get started here but first Annika wants to baby wear while we do this task so I've got to get this little uh, baby carrier that I made for Hagen when Hagen was her age and we're just gonna put her little doll in there and she's gonna play while we get this done so the first thing we have to do is get up all the toys and all the things that will not be vacuumed up and take this sofa apart. So this sofa comes apart really easily. It is one of those uh, modular sofas, so you can change the shape and morph it into whatever your family needs. And also underneath of each one of the cushions is a storage compartment. As you can see, we don't keep anything in the ones that we sit on, but I do keep pillows in the ottoman portions of this. So Aaron's giving me a hand here <laughs> because oh, he needs something to do all the time. If he's not busy doing something, he's pacing. So he's always a helper and I love having him around. We get so much done around the house. So we're just going to move these and pick up all the toys and get it nice and clean and back to ground zero like I like to call it when we do things like this when we get below the surface and really get some cleaning. You can see that our carpets do have some wear and tear in the main traffic areas and in the springtime I always do a big carpet cleaning, shampooing, steaming, vacuuming, whatever the thing is, uh, but I have one of those at home sharp it sharp it <laughs> carpet cleaning systems that I am able to uh, clean my carpets with so yeah this is winter time wear and tear on the carpet in front of the couch and we're going to get all that cleaned up in the springtime when I am able to uh, open up the windows for the whole day and let the carpet really get dried out we bring all the fans around the house and we uh, get the fans going. We have the ceiling fans on, all of our regu regular fans uh, plugged in all around the living room, and then we get those circulating and we shampoo the carpets, and it works out really well, but I don't tend to do it in the winter time just because of the dry factor. Even though we are in the high desert, it would take a long time for the carpet to dry, and then in that case, I get concerned about mold and mildew and all that stuff because as uh, previously I may have mentioned to you all, I used to work in environmental remediation and we removed mold, asbestos, and lead from people's environments. And so I'm very cautious about uh, things like that when I um, introduce moisture to the home and I just want to be sure that everything is clean and dried proper so that we don't encounter any mold or any issues like that. So this sofa goes back together super easily. It just has these little like hook clips that go in between and it secures the sofa very nicely. And like I said, you can add or subtract additional pieces to this. And Aaron and I are in the process of considering we're like do we want to buy some more sections to this because our family is large and this is the only sofa that we have in our living room so that is to be determined um i think we might end up getting a few more sections for this but you can see how it is constructed and how it goes together and we've really enjoyed it uh, i do miss our old sofas for the simple fact that i just those were mine and aaron's first sofas that we purchased together and i was sad to see them go. I really liked them and I haven't found another sofa that I like that compares. But the this sofa was sent to us by Hanbei and I will leave a link down below in the video's description for you all if you are interested in this type of sectional sofa. It is very well priced, I will say that, so give it a look if you are looking for something new. Wow, I was not expecting such a large shipment, um, but let's get this inside and see what it is. Oh, this is for kids. So this is from the Zwilling Kids. 
for ages three plus. This is my first knife. Oh my goodness, we got um, the kids a knife to cut up their veggies with. All right, so I'm gonna open up all this stuff, but right now what I'm gonna focus on is opening up the boxes, but check that out. How cool is this knife? I'm gonna share it with the kids in a little while and we're gonna talk it over and go over all of it, but let's get back to this unboxing. All right, oh, awesome. I already have one of these and the vacuum. So these are incredible. These are vacuum sealed glass casserole dishes. And so these are great for meal prep. I love them, they're awesome. So you have your glass and you've got a covered lid for it. Whoops. Oh, this box is a little bit weak. Oh my goodness. Oh, we got wow so this is a yeah! knife sharpening knife block wow i'm excited about this this is way cool self sharpening block i love a sharp knife sharp knives are really important you always need a sharp knife i'm always having to sharpen my knives so i'm excited to give this a try this box said fragile. We got another kid's knife and that's great because I have five kids so we need, need extra knives. We got another, um, this is a smaller casserole dish. See, we've got two sizes here. We've got both this size and this size. You see? This set and this set actually comes with another smaller one on the inside and then even an even smaller one like a butter dish this would be a perfect butter dish inside of that so isn't that cool a full set and all of them can be vacuum sealed with this and this comes in a separate kit that Zwilling already sent me so they've already sent me one and I did not need to my kids are now popping the air bubbles but I did not need to uh Get another. Okay, this is the little kid's knife. It is a metal knife, as you can see, but it is perfect for little hands. It has the little, so just, and it locks in there like that. So let me go cut. And it keeps their fingers back. It helps them have the correct, it helps them have the correct finger positioning for cutting. Okay, this is my sourdough, or actually not sourdough. I put sourdough discard in my daily loaf of bread recipe and my loaf exploded, but that's okay. It's gonna taste good anyways. It's always fun to experiment. Uh, it will be a little tricky to cut without shredding the top. Right here, it's gonna snag when I slice it probably, but it'll still be a delicious loaf of bread, serving the purpose, filling the bellies. Okay, these are these uh, willing, uh, storage containers the glass ones and this is how this works so you just take the vacuum sealer it vacuum seals the container so your weekly meal prep will stay absolutely fresh for a very long time longer than normal tupperware containers because it sucks all the oxygen out pretty nifty little gadget and then it comes with a um, usb charging port so it is rechargeable, which works out really well. Where's my, where's my beginning? There we go. This is the knife block that they sent. And if you look very carefully on the inside, you can see there's um, like little ceramic sharpeners and you can hear it. So when you slide the knife in and out, self sharpens. I mean, who could ask for anything more? You can't ask for anything more. Comes with a cool bread knife. I'm excited to use that. Um, my bread knife is kind of jacked, so I needed a new bread knife. Looking forward to it. 
and a little paring knife. Everything, every one of them has a sharpener. All right, let's make some dinner. We've got some egg noodles from Azure, some broccoli, some spinach. There's that pumpkin puree, some coconut cream, as well as some various broths from my pantry shelves. And then we have onion powder, garlic powder, pepper, and of course, Redmond's real salt. So let's get started. We're gonna crack open these cans and get this meal going. Basically, all you do is combine uh, the broths and then you bring to a boil you add your frozen broccoli let that cook for a minute then you're going to add your pasta you're going to let that cook for about five minutes and well let's get into this recipe it is going to be another family favorite i have a strong feeling about that i had my broth going and then i added the frozen broccoli and that kind of tamed it down a little bit but we're gonna we're just gonna keep on moving forward. We're gonna give this a stir, get this broccoli cooking up, and then after a few minutes, once this starts to simmer a little bit, we're gonna throw in these noodles. It doesn't look like it's simmering yet, but trust me, the water's hot enough. It's gonna be fine. These egg noodles don't get really, um, you know how, typical pasta from the store if you leave it in a broth it'll just like swell up and get turned to mush essentially these egg noodles i noticed don't do that they stay really firm and they keep their shape they don't explode and expand and turn into mush so i'm happy to put these in now and then we're going to add some Redmond's Real Salt because typically you do want to salt your water when you are cooking pasta and this broth does not have any salt in it. So we've got to add some and then cover this up and bring it to a boil. All right, I brought everything up to a boil and I let the noodles cook for about five minutes and I'm gonna add some other stuff to it. The noodles need to cook for about 10 minutes total. And these noodles came from Azure Standard. They are egg noodles made with organic durum wheat and they're really, really good. So I added some coconut cream. That was about a third of a can because the rest of it was coconut water. And so I reserved that in another uh, jar for my smoothie later on. Then we just added some onion powder, some garlic powder, some ground pepper. Here I'm adding some paprika. And then I'm going to uh, be adding in some of this pumpkin and butternut squash puree that I made. And this is just gonna be some extra nutrition in here, some extra flavor, and to sauce it up just a little bit, thicken the sauce just a tad. Uh, I also added the chicken broth and pork broth to this just because I wanted to use up some items from my pantry. And as you guys can see here, I'm not actually measuring, I'm just cooking based on intuition. Uh, but that was about, a cup and a half of the squash, butternut squash and little pumpkin puree that I added to this soup. So originally this was supposed to be a creamier, thicker pasta with a sauce type deal. And I got this inspiration from Tammy over at Cluttered Mother. She shared this recipe on her Instagram, but she also has a really awesome YouTube channel that I absolutely love. Her family is so, so sweet. And I just want to say thank you, Tammy, for inspiring this soup tonight. It was a takeoff from what you made, but yours was different and I failed failed and it turned into a soup so i hope you guys enjoy this recipe give it a try use what you have and adapt to it and i'm sure you will come up with a wonderful recipe as well i decided to add some spinach for some extra veggie power this is loaded with protein in the egg noodles and then we also get three different vegetables in here or if you include the onion powder and the garlic but we're having the broccoli the squash and the spinach so i really wanted to load my kids up on some veggies i have been in the sick house for the last week and Aaron's been feeding them and he feeds them an excellent diverse diet uh probably limited veggies so mama is here to you know get their weekly dose of veggies in with this soup and this soup tastes delicious I'm just giving it a little taste 
And I'm probably going to have a bowl of this myself. As you all know, I've been on a carnivore lion diet for the last couple months. And well, I've lost too much weight. So I'm going to start eating normal again. I'm just going to be careful with what I'm eating, trying to avoid the foods that really cause me a whole lot of inflammation. And uh, I'm going to give this soup a try and I'll let you know in a future video how I handled it if it caused me inflammation and pain or not, but I am just so hungry, you guys, and I really need to regain the last nine pounds that I just lost. I've got to get that weight back on somehow, so this soup is going down tonight. That's mine, bud. Okay. It's a perfect little kid's knife. Fun stuff. It's okay. You're good. <coughs> good job, Annika. I mean, you're, you're good at this. Can I try it? Can yeah. Try it? Mm -hmm. Question's turn. That's easy. Left hand. Maybe we always got to keep the knife back. Your fingers go like that. Your fingers go like Just that. Grab wow. the blade, can I, can I have my old dog oh, banana? Good job. Thank you all so much for joining me. Go ahead and give this video a like, and I will see you next time. Bye.